All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to some structure-free learning. And in this video, we're sticking with reinforced concrete and going to talk about the reinforcement ratio. And really, hopefully, by the time this video is over, you'll have a sense of what the reinforcement ratio is, and more importantly, why it's so significant to reinforced concrete beam design. So. To get started, you know, I went ahead and drew out here the strain and stress profiles of a singly reinforced concrete section here. And you know, the challenge with the reinforced concrete beam design is that you've got to select a width B, a depth to steel, and the area of steel, and that, that area of steel depends on the number and size of bars that you choose. And all these parameters can vary. And so one of the ways or one of the parameters that we use to compare multiple sections across each other, if you will, is the reinforcement ratio. Now, the reinforcement ratio is just the ratio of the area of steel to the area of concrete in a way, but just B times D. That's how we express the area of concrete. And this row is what we're going to use. The symbol row is what's used to express the reinforcement ratio. And what it is, is just, it's a way for us to compare multiple or various cross sections to one another in terms of the fraction, the volume fraction or area fraction of steel that's within a cross section. So for example, if I had a cross section that had three number nine bars here, so AS was three number nine bars, which is three times one inches squared. That would be three inches squared. And then the width were 12 inches and the depth were 24 inches. My reinforcement ratio would just be three inches squared divided by 12 inches times 24 inches. And this would just be 0 0.0104. And a lot of times this is expressed in terms of percentage. And this is about 1%. So it's pretty easy to calculate, but the real significance of it is is w the relationship between rho and the strain in steel at ultimate. And that's where the true value of, of this reinforcement ratio parameter comes in. So in order for us to look at the relationship between the reinforcement ratio and the strain in steel, let's take a look, closer look at the cross section here. And this means taking a look at, well, to take a closer look at equilibrium, we'll start by looking at equilibrium here. So, you know, looking at force equilibrium, so some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero here. And I'll just say that, you know, we know TS is equal to C sub C. I've probably, you've probably seen this before if you're taking reinforced concrete or you've watched one of my videos. Hopefully it's the latter. <laughs> right here but here if you assume that the strain in the tension steel if we assume that epsilon s is greater than or equal to epsilon y then we know that this the steel has yielded and so to calculate the force in the steel it would just be asfy and this right here and if we can use the equivalent stress block would be 0.85 fc prime times b times beta 1 times c and a and I'll call CNA the depth to the neutral axis from the extreme compression fiber here and now I want to rearrange this so I can make it look like a reinforcement ratio and recall that the reinforcement ratio look like this this AS over BD so I'm gonna take this B over here and bring it to the other side so that's gonna make it AS over B I'm gonna bring this FY this way so this will be equal to point eight oops here this will be equal to point eight five FC prime over FY times beta one times CNA and if I multiply both sides by one over D so if I divide both sides by D I've got this relationship and I've and I've inserted a row here this is this whole parameter is just row and that row so far is 0.85 FC prime over FY times beta 1. And really, this neutral axis depth is what's related to my strains right here, because I need to get my strains in this equation somehow. So if I look at the strain profile, so if I go back, take a look at the strain profile over here, I can use similar triangles to relate the strain at ultimate to the strain at steel here. And so that's going to look like this here, just by similar triangles. I would have that epsilon s over d minus c and a is equal to epsilon c u over c and a and if I work some algebra here epsilon s times c and a is equal to I'm just going to 
multiply this D minus C and A by epsilon C U and then multiply it through. So this is going to be epsilon C U times D minus epsilon C U times C and A. And I'm going to group the C and A terms together. So that would be epsilon S plus epsilon C U times C and A is equal to epsilon C U times D. And by the magic of algebra right here, I will, I'm able to calculate C and A over D is equal to epsilon C U over epsilon S plus epsilon C U. And that would mean that I have right here, substituting for this CNA, I'm going to include this term right here. So I would have times epsilon C U over epsilon S plus epsilon C U. I have a relationship between rho and epsilon S. And so all parameters being held the same, FC prime, FY, beta one, right? and epsilon cu, if I increase rho, that means I am decreasing my strain in the steel, in the tension steel. Or if I want to increase my strain in the tension steel, then I'm going to decrease rho. And when you specify a row for designing, that means, or a target row, you know, something you're shooting for, right here when you design a reinf singly reinforced concrete beam that means you're selecting a target steel strain value now I can use this relationship for all kinds of things right here like if I want to know when you know when does balance failure occur or when does my steel and concrete crush simultaneously then I can just plug in I just substitute here epsilon s is equal to 0 0.002 the yield strain of the steel and then solve for rho and that'll give me rho balanced that this rho balance parameter that you know people usually reference for simultaneous failure of concrete or concrete crush and steel yield at the same time or if I want to know you know at what reinforcement ratio will I have a tension control beam all I got to do is put epsilon s equal to 0 0.005 and I would get a rho for 0 0.005 this would be the most steel I want to put in, the, the largest reinforcement ratio, you know, so that I could use a fee value of 0.9. All right, so hopefully that was a little interesting. The next thing we'll do is go into a process for designing, relation, designing a, a reinforced concrete, singly reinforced concrete beam. All right, take it easy. See ya.